Our service of morning prayer begins on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. The hour is coming, and it now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms number 40 and 54. Psalm 40 begins on page 640 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 54 begins on page 659. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them. But they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart, 
I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me, my sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say aha and gloat over me be confounded because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry, O my God. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. A reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verse 22, through chapter 10, verse 15. Joshua summoned them and said to them, Why did you deceive us, saying, We are very far from you, while in fact you are living among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you shall always be slaves, hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, Because it was told to your servants for a certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. So we were in great fear for our lives because of you, and did this thing. And now we are in your hand. Do as it seems good and right in your sight to do to us. This is what he did for them. He saved them from the Israelites, and they did not kill them. But on that day Joshua made them hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, to continue to this day in the place that he should choose. When King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, he became greatly frightened because Gibeon was a large city like one of the royal cities and was larger than Ai, and all its men were warriors. So King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent a message to King Hoham of Hebron, to King Piram of Jarmuth, 
to King Japhia of Lachish and to King Debir of Eglon, saying, Come up and help me, and let us attack Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered their forces and went up with all their armies and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. And the Gibeonites sent to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal, saying, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who live in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the fighting force with him, all the mighty warriors. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who inflicted a great slaughter on them at Gibeon, chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Oron, and struck them down as far as Azekah and Makedah. As they fled before Israel, while they were going down the slope of Beth Oron, the Lord threw down huge stones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died and they were no more who died because of the hailstones that the Israelites killed with the sword. On the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to the Lord, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still at Gibeon, and a moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, until the nation took vengeance on their enemies, is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in mid-heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since when the Lord heeded a human voice, for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Here ends the reading. Let us pray together, Canto 9, Ecce Deus, page 86 of the Book of Common Prayer. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 15, verses 14 through 33. I myself feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, on some points I have written you, to you rather boldly by way of reminder, because of the grace given to me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and as far around as Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the good news of Christ. 
Thus I make it my ambition to proclaim the good news, not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. This is the reason that I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, with no further place for me in these regions, I desire, as I have for many years, to come to you when I go to Spain. For I do not hope to see you on my journey. For I do hope to see you on my journey and to be sent on by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a little while. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem in a ministry to the saints. For Macedonia and Achai have been pleased to share their resources with the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. They were pleased to do this, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material things. So when I have completed this and have delivered to them what has been collected, I will set out by way of you to Spain. And I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in earnest prayer to God on my behalf, that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea and that my ministry to Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. Here ends the reading. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And to let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 1 through 23. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourselves. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them to the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. 
Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas? For Jesus was called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife said word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. Here ends the reading. Let us pray together, Canticle 11, Surajay Illuminari, beginning on page 87 of the Book of Common Prayer. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Holy 
Father, you have nourished and strengthened your church by the inspired writings of your servant, Thomas Akempis. Grant that we may learn from him to know what is necessary to be known, to love what is to be loved, to praise what highly pleases you, and always to seek to know and follow your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ, who stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Welcome to our service and morning prayer here at All Saints in San Francisco. We're so happy you've chosen to worship with us. If you'd like to have any prayer uh, mentioned in our morning prayer services, please contact us through our website, uh, All Saints SF, All Saints SF org. We will be happy to include any prayer request in our morning prayer service. You may also email me directly at chaplain at All Saints SF org. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Dear God, we pray for your holy church, for all who minister in her. We pray for all priests, bishops, deacons, pastors, parsons, lay people leading services. We pray for all the nations of this world. We pray for all those in authority. May they be guided to just and moral decisions for your love and your wisdom. Dear God, we pray for the poor, the sick, the homeless, the hungry, the needy, for those in prison. We pray for those suffering from COVID-19 and those concerned about it. We pray for the unemployed and those facing financial insecurity. We pray for Janie, Mona, Fred, Rose, Shepard, Aster, Richard, Roger, John, Teresa, God, we pray for all those who have died. We pray for those who passed away with COVID-19. We pray for George, Brianna, Ahmad, Bashard, Elijah, for any and all who have died, who are killed, murdered, executed because of racial bias, hatred, bigotry, indifference. And we pray for all those who have died through violence from everywhere in the world. Dear God, we pray for the concerns of this community, for all those we hold dear in our heart. We pray for all government workers, medical workers, frontline workers, emergency personnel, grocery store workers, truck drivers, deliverers, all those who work to keep us healthy, safe, and fed. We pray for Polly, Shirley, Bill, the Harris family, Ian, Lola Carmelita, Enon Rose, Abigail, Len, Malia, Sierra, Teresa, Wonson family, Otis, Thomas Patrick, Phyllis, Tom, Lewis, Cardi, Kevin, Cara, Lou, Osun, Estianis, Howard, Sophia, Ricky, Monica, Elizabeth, Dr. Lenz, Nicole, Jesus, Penny, Claire, Tricia, Jen, David, Salvatore. Dear God, we give you thanks for all the blessings of this life, for each and everything you do for us every single day. 
We give thanks for our community here at All Saints. We thank you for our interim rector, Beth, our music director, Bill, our office administrator, Augustine, our lay leaders. We give thanks for the Saturday morning food program and pray to you for those who are fed by it while giving thanks for the volunteers and praying that this ministry may begin again soon. We give thanks for the San Francisco Health Care Home, giving thanks for the medical staff, personnel who work there, praying for those who dwell there, and praying that this ministry also may begin again soon. We give thanks for the 100th birthday of Willard Harris and the baptism of Karevi. Most of all, great God, we give you thanks for this wonderful, marvelous gift of creation. May we become faithful stewards of that great gift. For whom and for what else shall we pray? Let us join together all our prayers in the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray you give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 